Hi Notboard Gamers and welcome back to Notboard Gaming. I'm your host, I'm Mark. Now, <laughs> do I have a treat for you today? Um, it's not very often that when I preview a game it utterly knocks me away from the very moment I start playing it. Uh, uh, and certainly games that are in kind of prototype and preview phase as well, you know, you want to like them, of course you do. Um, but every now and again, these, these something comes along and it absolutely blows away any expectations that you had. And I'm glad to say that this game I'm going to talk about today is Halls of Hegra. It's a pure solo game from Petr Shanker Olsen and Tom Pitt Games. Now, Petr's the person behind Donning the Purple, which was released a, uh, two or three years ago. Uh, and I reviewed Donning the Purple, the solo experience. I thought it was okay. Um, it wasn't, um, I didn't think it was anything exceptional as a solo game. I can see Donning the Purple being a, a, a particularly uh, good multiplayer game, but as a solo game it kind of lacked a little bit for me, and I said as much in the review. However, Petter sent me over Halls of Hegra, which is a pure solo game. And pure solo games are few and far between, of course they are. Uh, and um, I kind of heard a bit about this and then I'd seen some of the developments and I heard David Turksey talking about it because he'd been uh, kind of, uh, he'd had a play of it with uh, with Petter, etc. Uh, Petter had let him have a, a kind of, not help in the development, be, but see part of the development, etc. And I heard David like really saying it was really, really good. Uh, and I've got to say, and this is from somebody who has no interest in war games, I think it's absolutely outstanding. And I'll come on and, and talk about why uh, in a wee while. Uh, but for me, it's the best pure solo game that I've played in a long, long time. Certainly in the, in the in the near future, and I'm talking pure solo here, not the best solo game where there's a solo mode involved, but the best pure solo experience I, I've had in a long, long time. Now, pure solo games, I say, they can be few and far between. You know, some of the big hitters that have come out recently are games like Warp's Edge or um, Under Falling Skies or uh, So You Beat, no, So You Beat, it wasn't, but yeah, the Warp's Edge, Under Falling Skies, etc. And I'm sure some of the war games as well are uh, pure solo. Now, I've got to admit, I've never really played any war games, so none of the kind of uh, David Thompson games, etc. So this is my first foray into war games. Um, but it is an utterly, utterly astounding experience while playing this. It's devastating, it's real. Uh, I'll talk about the history in, 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 uh, in a second or two. And it's utterly fascinating. So what is Halls of Hegra? I'll say it's a solo, um, uh, a pure solo game which is kind of threat management. So the closest games I can put it to are something like This War of Mine or um, uh, Robinson Crusoe, etc. There is increasing elements of threat coming to get you and you've got to manage these threats and try and maximise your early game so that in the latter game, when things really start turning bad, you have enough resources, you have enough people, you've dug out enough of the options, you've got the kind of destroyed enough of the, uh, the foreign forces, etc., to help you survive those latter days when you're getting bombarded. Because it is a war game uh, of sorts. It's based on a particular uh, uh, thing that happened during World War II. There was about 250 Norwegian volunteers and they dug in near Hegra Fortress uh, to, uh, against the onslaught of massively overwhelming numbers of German forces. And I think the entire thing lasted like 25 days in total. Really brave, these volunteers. Eventually, they succumbed to the Germans. They were captured. They were sent into uh, prisoner war camps. Uh, but then Hitler released them um, in kind of recognition of the valiant fight that they put up against the Germans. It's a, you know, it's a, a piece of war history and, and obviously Norwegian war history that I knew nothing about whatsoever. So I would advise you, if you want to know more about kind of um, the siege of Hegra and, and Hegra Fortress, etc., go on Wikipedia, find out a little bit about it. And that's exactly what you're doing here in Halls of Hegra. Um, you see, what's going to happen is over a period of, and this takes place over 11 days, which is effectively split up into one, two, three, four, four phases, if you like, and each of those has some kind of sub-phases, but over 11 days, um, you're going to kind of dig in uh, over the first part. You're going to try and maximise your resources. You're going to try and repair some of the stuff that's damaged, build up your defences, etc., getting ready for what happens. So that's all the mobilization phase. Then what happens is you move to the first attack phase and that's when things start to turn a little bit bad for you. 
Then after the first attack phase, you're gonna get into the siege phase. Uh, which is when, uh, so the first siege phase, when it's really starting to get heavy for you, then into the second siege phase. So, you know, you've got things like, uh, as well as throughout the game, progressively, you're going to have infantry coming up and attacking you. You're going to have artillery firing on you. Then there's going to be airstrikes coming in against you as well. And all that gets progressively, progressively harder as you go through. If you make it through all of that back to, to the back end of day 11 and you still have surviving members and you haven't had to surrender and you haven't lost everything whatsoever, then there's also these <laughs> last stand cards as well. And these are a real kicker because if you make it through to there, first of all, you've done very well. But secondly, you have to make sure that you've got enough left in the tank to battle that last stand. Uh, and all the while, the, the sense of tension is building up. The sense of desperation is building up as well. It's utterly astounding. I can't really tell you much more about the game without showing you some of the game. Now, I'm not going to go too in-depth because... I think I could confuse things uh, a little bit because effectively there are, as I say, kind of four stages to the game uh, played on over different uh, over five decks of cards, uh, five decks of cards, or so five stages, if you like five decks of cards, three different board types where you uh, uh, semi board types or small board types, if you like, where you're kind of adapting to what's happening um, as you're playing through. Uh, there's morale impacts and, and everything. So I think if I tried to tell you too much about how the game played, then what would happen is it would confuse a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll give you a very, very brief overview and then I'll talk about my thoughts on why you should back Halls of Hegra when it launches on Kickstarter. Because, and the link will be in the description below, because I think, I think this is going to replace a certain game for a lot of people it's certainly you know um uh, for me it's my favorite experience of this type of game that i played so let me show you the board let me show you what everything does and talk a little bit about the gameplay <laughs> So here we can see the game laid out at the beginning of the game. So up here, we'll start off in this map up here, and you can see it's got various coloured rings on there. <laughs> they mean certain things throughout the game, basically. Um, but you, certainly when the artillery comes or when you're trying to hit either artillery or infantry on there, those become a little bit more meaningful. And as you progress through the various stages, you're going to put German patrols on there as well. Up at the top are some supplies. And what's going to happen when you do a supply room, which is one of your actions you can take, you're going to move out and try and collect those supplies bring them back to the base so you can increase your morale but also increase the threat at the same time uh, you're going to get some supplies and also get kind of the special bonus that's on there as well that's a key part of the game is trying to go out and get these supplies to try and make sure that you're making the most of everything that you can while you can because as the game as this part of the board starts to fill up then what's going to happen is it's start, going to start to get a little bit more difficult and why how is that going to fill up well if you look down on here this is the turn track and you can see there's 11 days down here what you may not be able to see and let me just see if i can zoom in on this is there we go so if you look here you can see these little German patrol markers here on day one because at the end of day one what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the patrol bag which is this bag here and I'm going to pull out two markers that's telling me to pull two out on that particular day there we go so we got these German patrol markers here we go and this is a two a one and a two so if I zoom back up to the main board now so bear with me so up there what I would do on this particular go is I would put German patrol markers on space one and space two. That means I would have to either avoid, sneak past them or encounter some kind of combat with them as I was trying to get supply runs. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself there. I just want to explain how the board works. So if we have a look at the board in its entirety, okay so up here you've got your airstrike up here now you're going to get the opportunity to remove some of those but those start to come in on the later phases and what they'll do they're going to go into a hit bag so you've got a i've got this little black bag here and you're going to start putting tokens in here there'll be missed tokens there'll be artillery tokens there'll be damage tokens for things you've uncovered and also airstrike tokens and what you're going to have to do is pull tokens out of there at some point and then see what comes out obviously the more tokens that go in, unless they're missed tokens, generally the worse it is for you. 
Here you have your artillery, uh, and they're going to go out onto the board. And if there's ever six, I think, artillery on the board at any one time, that's it. That's game over. You've lost that. And I think that, again, that comes in the latter phase as the artillery is going to start coming out for you there. Down here are the number of supplies that you've got. Um, and you can trade <laughs> uh, and you can trade supplies as well. Um, but uh, what happens is that as the game goes on, um, it kind of it gets more difficult. You have to spend more supplies to trade stuff there. Here is where you're going to put your forces. So you can see I've got three counters on there. That's soldiers, that's volunteers, and that's officers. In this red bag, there's other ones as well. So there is a white one, which is for the kind of medics, and there's a green one, which is a hunter. And there's also these orange discs as well. And those orange discs are doubt and that's this board here now let me just talk about this board because what you've got is effectively three phases of use for this board you've got zero mobilization and this is here in this green bit down on the board here I'll just zoom back out there you may not be able to see that so this is here the mobilization phases take place over days one to three and it tells you what happened you can start with fear and doubt they add doubt into the bag and fear does some nasty things as well back at the end of it as well then on day three there's a coop and you're going to flip that over and here we go we get to first attack which is days four to six and then that's going to happen there so that would then place there and you're going to start moving soldiers artillery the um um not the artillery the uh, infantry onto here and as they move up this board on days four to six and they get to the charge they're going to start injuring your your uh, your soldiers then as if we look here once we get past kind of day six it then moves on to the whole defender walls and that's where things start to really get sticky we've got the siege one we've got siege two and we've got last stand as well from there so it's a really nice use of kind of um uh, of the board if you like of, uh, of kind of different ways to use the board uh because the gameplay is adaptive as you play through it as well now over here as we move over here so you've got some defender walls so you've got some broken stuff there you've got your defense value there which starts on none uh, on zero then over here we've got the infirmary so throughout the game your soldiers are going to get injured and basically what would happen or your soldiers or volunteers are going to get injured and they would move out onto there now there's only three spots on there if that's full and you cannot then um uh you cannot place any more on there then again that's of course a game over but at the end of each turn what you can do is go through kind of relapse and recovery and you can move them up and when they get to the top what will happen is they will be recovered they'll be moved back and it'll be available for you uh, over here is your morale track and that's really important your mal morale will go up and down throughout the game the further up it goes the better for you because over here you've got some high morale cards and you get to t you get to turn one of those over and they've got benefits on them so for example if we look here oh there are the despair cards sorry high morale cards are here and the despair cards there we go so high morale cards are here and we turn those over and they've got benefits on them so it says if you're in the mobilization and you get one of these cards um you add one to the hit bag um uh, one miss to the hit bag which is good uh in siege you would gain two supplies in siege two you would move the uh the defense one level up so they're really good they're fantastic but <laughs> if you get low morale which is the ones down here then you've got these things these cards here which are not going to have any benefit for you so these of here on mobilization first attract they're going to increase the threat level siege one remove one delivery token from the rightmost supply depot or siege two injure two defenders that means you're going to put two defenders into there you do get the ability to modify those decks good or bad <laughs> So here in low morale, there are some hope cards and you're going to put, you know, get the ability to shuffle those into those decks and see what you pull out of there. But in high morale card, in a high morale deck, what you've got here is uh, some despair cards and you get to shuffle them in. So things can go good or bad dependent on those. So you would do that, kind of go through your morale track at the end of your turn and then you would check, see whether you surrender. Now, if you ever move them to unconditional surrender, that's it. That is the game lost. And again, down here next to these, at the end of each round, there's a little number. You m must have that number of defenders available. So um, so here we've got where you start on honorable surrender. At the end of each round, you must have at least five. Uh, for surrender, you must have at least six. And you go down for um, the German retreat, you must have at least three defenders to be successful. The gameplay is adaptive. Each stage as you go through these stages changes ever so slightly and it's driven by the deck of cards that's in there. So let me talk, talk you through exactly how a round would go in the early stages of the game. So we just zoom into the board. 
Okay. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a card from the mobilization deck. All right. And it tells me what the weather type is on here. And here we got, we got, it's cloudy. Up here is cloudy. And that means that on the supply run, anybody that's on the supply run can move one to five spaces. So one, two, three, four, five. They could effectively reach up to the supplies that are up there if I move somebody into the supply room. Then we read the text on there. What does it say? Look at this. Instantly, I lose two morale. So that's this part over here. And what this is going to mean, one, two, is at the end of my turn, I would have to draw three low morale cards and resolve two. They're the ones that aren't particularly good, yeah? Uh, the prospect of bitter cold and frostbite is taking its toll on the recruits. Then what it says I've got to do here is I have to add the number of doubt tokens to the bag equal to the doubt figure. My doubt figure is this one here. It's currently on one, that's where you start, it's underlined. Doubt are these here, and I'm gonna add these to my recruitment bag, okay? So here we go. Then what I get to do is I get to potentially build my forces up, okay? So I get to, um, I get to draw from this bag, and I can draw up to four tokens from this bag. However, if I draw a doubt token out of there, <laughs> it stops. I stop drawing out, and I can only choose one soldier to put into my uh, into my bay into my um, uh, into my barracks, if you like, who will be in the ready position. So let's draw from this doubt back uh, the recruit back. So as I say, I get to draw up to four from here. But if a doubt disc, an orange disc, is drawn out then unfortunately, <laughs> that means I have to stop and choose one. And there should be a recruitment area, but I'll just do it on the board. So the first one is a blue. That's a volunteer. That's good. Do I push my look? Yeah, there's a little bit of pushy look here. So let's go again and we'll go, oh, bugger. It's an orange one, okay? What that means is if I'd drawn out some others, so let's say I'd drawn four blues out, for example, yeah? Uh, and no orange, I would get to put all of those blues into my ready, but I didn't. If I'd have drawn, say, three out and then that orange, then what would have happened is I would have had to choose one of these and the rest would have gone back into the, um, uh, the reserve pile here. But however, I didn't. I only drew one blue. So what I'm going to do, the orange goes back in the bag, the doubt goes back in the bag. Early part's really in, in, important to try and minimise the amount of doubt that goes in there. This blue one, this, who's a volunteer, is going to go into my ready. You know, you start off with some in there already, uh, already three soldiers, two volunteers, and an officer. However, when you put a volunteer into ready, you get to get another supply. So there we go, I've got two supplies there now. So these are my supplies here. So I now have two supplies. They're gonna come in really, really, really useful. So that's that card completed. I've completed the first mobilization card. These uh, icons down here are for injuries, and that tells you that if, if anybody was to be injured, you would use that as the driver as to which, uh, which priority to choose them in, basically. So it would be officer, soldier, medic, volunteer, and hunter. So we'll put that to the top there, but those decks are going to get progressively harder as we go through and adapt to what's on the board. So that's kind of the first part, the uh, first part of uh, the first stage in mobilization is the card has been drawn, We've gone through the processes on the card, gone through the, doubt, uh, the uh, recruit bag, and I now have these guys ready in, my, um, ready in my barracks, so to speak, in my supplies, in my barracks. I've got one officer, three volunteers, and three soldiers. So that's the event phase done, and that kind of follows a similar suit, but in increasing difficulty with different effects depending on the board, depending on where you are uh, along this track here, obviously. Um, so, you know, if mobilization, you're going to use the mobilization deck, first attack, siege, siege one, siege two, etc. You're going to use the appropriate cards for that. Then what we do is we move into the morning phase. And what would happen here is you would move throughout the game, you see, what's going to happen is your various defenders, once you've used them, they're going to go in tired or you're going to have some in rest. And you would start to, start to move those along. So any one that you got in rest, you would move to ready. Any that you got in tired, you would move to rest, basically. Um, so you're going to start moving those along. You can spend supplies to move your defenders from tired to ready. And that's really these supplies that are really important. As I say, it's kind of um, uh, really... Uh, 
Early game, one supply will move you four defenders across, but as it gets later in the game, as this moves up, one supply is going to move one, uh, one defender across. And you can also spend morale to do that as well if you wanted to. So uh, one morale, you can move two defenders across. Um, you move your defenders from tired to rest, and then you're going to move your defenders into their action spots. And this is the kind of key part of the game. This is where you start planning out what you want to do. So uh, kind of, if we look at here, what, what do we need to do? Well, this kind of here is the key thing initially down on the maintenance track down here. So I'll just zoom into that and show you what, that's, what that is. So down here in maintenance, right, okay? So you've got shovel snow. Shoveling snow is really important because what it does is it moves this snow, 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 snow marker to the left. So there's a snow marker just above, let me go. There we go, I think. There. So we've got a snow marker just here uh, on the board. And as you move that to the left, what's going to happen is it eventually it'll move into here and you get to flip up one of these snow cards, basically. You flip up the top snow cards because on the board you have these various blacked out sections. Field telephone, map room, radio, uh, medicine cabinet, gun two. You want to uncover those and that's the early part of the end. That's the beauty about this early part of the game. You're effectively digging out supplies. So moving that snow marker is really, really important. Now, you can't use your officer on there. And if you use a green one, that acts as moving it two spaces. And you can put as many as you want on there, basically. So the more you stack that up with, um, uh, with your defenders, the more that's going to do. Here, we've got repair. And you get to move one damage tile or unjam one action space. Because, as we can see on the gun here, on these defense spaces here, you've got, they're perfectly viable, but they have damage markers on them. You need to start... <laughs> Un, you start fixing those uh, those particular items. So repair becomes really important, but you need to put two of your defenders on there to, de to uh, repair one of those. Now, the key thing is, when you, <laughs> when you repair them, they don't go away. What happens is those damage markers are gonna go back into your hit bag. Remember in here, um, I've got a miss token, I've got an artillery token. These are gonna go into here. So they, when you have to go into the hit bag and draw from that, they could be re-damaged at any point. But certainly on the gun, if you look at the gun, it's cut hair that you know you have. Uh, that's a hit basically, and you're gonna want to free up as many of those as possible. And then what happens is when you shot from them, they move to that side, it becomes uh, uh, unusable, and then they become broken again. But you want to try and repair those. Same with these defender walls here. You need to try and repair those so you can start putting your soldiers on there, which will help in the, the in the next stage of the game when the uh, infantry is moving on. Then we've got bolster. Um, so you can add a miss tile, so that's one of these tiles here, um, into the hit bag, or you can move your defense up to, and this is this here. So defense becomes really important because when you are uh, being attacked, then your defense figure, whatever that is on, is going to uh, effectively null one of, the, uh, one of the attacks against you. So again, boosting that up is really, really important. Um, here we've got promote. So what you can do is you get to promote a defender. Uh, you would have put an officer on there plus one other defender that's not a, uh, a hospital or a doctor, it's a medic, etc. And that way you get to upgrade a defender. So you might move a defender from a volunteer into a soldier because soldiers can be a little bit more adaptive on, uh, in the game as the game progresses. And down here you get to inspire. So spend two uh, or your officer will count as two. If you put two of your defenders on there or one officer, that will count as two and you get to move the marker up one. This is this morale marker, which is gonna come into play at the end of the game. So you're gonna take those actions. I say you get to spend all your defenders. So let's have a look here, what we got. We got three soldiers and I wanna do some digging out basically. Um, but I've also got this here. I've got, got some, oh, you see, I've also got other actions on the board as well. Um, up here, there's fire for artillery but uh, obviously all my artillery isn't fixed here. Here is a supply run. I get to send somebody out, out on a supply run. Um, so yeah, um, let's see. I, I, yeah, so I think actually this starts the game with just these on here. So there's only one lot of supply tokens up at the top at the moment. And you get to you have to uh, add more supply tokens as it goes on. So um, I could, Add new supply runs, add more tokens onto there. I could negotiate, move one marker either down on the doubt or the fear tracks, and that's going to be important as we move on. 
uh, I could fire at the gates, uh, I could send somebody out on a supply run and start trying to get out here. So let's do that, I think. Let's uh, potentially open a new supply run and send somebody out on a supply, uh, open a new supply route and send somebody out on a supply run. So as I say, at the beginning, you're only gonna start with the supply tokens up there. I may want to open more up on there, but that's gonna cost me two, but I'm okay, so let's do two on that. So I'll plus two on that, place my action disc on there. Um, then let's have a look. What else do I want to do? I want to move this, this snow marker away, I think. So let's do that. Let's do two soldiers on there. Then we'll do one soldier and one volunteer on there. That will move it too. I maybe want to repair as well. Um, yeah. So, but that's going to cost me two to repair. But repairing is going to be really, really important for me. And I want to start opening these guns up here. So let's... Um, yeah, let's let's do a repair. I can remove one of these damage markers. And then I've just got my officer left. Don't have to use them. Don't have to spend them all, of course. Uh, in fact, no, what we'll do is we will do that there. And I shall send my guy out, uh, my soldier out on a supply run. So that's it. I've used all my discs. Okay, so that was the morning phase done. And then you've got the day phase. And this is where you... Um, uh, this is where you start to kind of use the actions that you've done. So we're going to start off on number one here. We're going to open a new supply route. So I'm going to take my two volunteers here, put them into the tired area, and open up a new supply route. So I'm going to put that there, which allows me to start removing German patrols from the map. Okay. Then, as we move over to number two, fire artillery. My artillery isn't there at all at the moment, so I can't fire any artillery. Then what I do is I then send out a new supply run or a new counter, uh, counter patrol. So we're going to move my guy into this here and he gets to move all supply runs. So he's now in this area, he can choose any of these supply runs. Well, of course, he can only go up here uh, and the counter, when he gets to bring it back, he gets to use that counter. I'm OK for supplies at the moment. He can move five because it was cloudy weather. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, yeah, I'm going to move him, try and get him up here. So one, two, three, four, five. He's going to have a token on him. Now, now he's got a token on, he can move one space less, apart from if he's a hunter, and hunters can move many space. So on the next go, if it's still cloudy, he can only move four back, so he may not be able to make it back on the next go. So that's the supply run gone out. So when he comes back, um, uh, if he returns back to base, you move the defenders to the tide area, you gain a morale, you also increase your threat, and you get two supplies plus whatever is on that token as well. So here we're going to shovel snow. So of course he's not tired because he's still there at the moment, so I've effectively lost one person there if you like. Oops. So here we're going to shovel snow. I've got two tokens here. So I get to shovel snow, I'm going to move this marker one, two. Now, had I moved that three, had I put three on there, I would move that to there, and I'll flip that over and see what it says. And look at that. That would be a boon there. That would increase my, that would have increased my morale by two. But also in here, as I say, what you've got is various things. So there may be boons like water, but there could be new things that you can put on the map, like the radio, which is there, which gives you new action spaces. But you'll not know because the snow cards are obviously all randomized. Of course, I didn't move it to there. I only moved it to one. So that's there. So they've gone into tide now. And now I get to, I can't use him on there. Oh, for crying out loud. So yeah, maybe I should have used that guy there. Yeah, I could have used him on that. So that's how it should have gone. I can't use the officer on there. So remove uh, one damage tile or unjam one action space. Move them to rest. Remove one damage tile. I'm gonna remove one of my gun damage tiles, but as I say, they go into the hit bag. There we go. And that's all the actions completed now. So we've moved a little bit. We dug some snow out. Um, we've got to go out to a supply run up there. Um, and I've unjammed this particular, uh, this particular gun. So if I wanted to, if I needed to, I could start firing. 
So that's kind of the end of those actions there, but we're not done on the day. You see, had I got anybody in the hospital here, this is where I do the relapse and recovery. Uh, so I could move all patients in the waiting area down one here. And if you get uh, players down in the morgue, that's it. Can be day, that's game over. Or you move all the patients in the beds one level up as well. Um, so you constantly, as these, you should start to get injured defend, defenders. You're managing, trying to not get the waiting area too busy because that'll end the game for you, but also trying to push those up as well. And you'll start to use your medic for certain actions there as well. Um, then we're going to have a look at morale modifiers now then. So we're now on to morale itself. So we've gone through all of it, one through to five, which is the infirmary. We're now on six morale modifiers. It says, is it a red day? No, it's day one down here. It's not a red day. It's a red day that decreases my morale by one. Anything else? Am I out of supplies? No, I've got supplies. Uh, I've got defenders in the waiting area. No, nope, no defenders in there. Uh, per defender in the morgue. There's no defenders in the morgue. I think it's if you've got five in there, but I could be wrong. Uh, and any enemy soldiers in red sectors. <coughs> there are no energy, enemy, enemy infantry on board at the moment. So no further morale modifiers, which is a shame, not up or down. Um, so, oh, here we go. Uh, my doubt marker, um, buh, 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 buh. that's, no, that's fine. That's okay as well. So what's going to happen here is uh, we are now going to resolve this here. So it says here, minus two, draw three low morale cards and resolve two of them. So we'll draw the top three low morale cards. Here we go. And I get to resolve two of them, <laughs> which is not great. Remobilization. I can add one to the board. That's, that's only two. I can add one despair card to the high morale deck, high morale deck or one despair card. So here's what we'll do. Okay. So we'll shuffle that back in. There we go. And we shall resolve these two here. Okay, so the first one is I'm going to add a patrol to the board. So remember, I've got my patrol here. We'll add that to the board, and that's going in position four. So there's a German patrol on the board. So that's one, that one done. And then the next one in mobilization phase, add one despair to the uh, card to the high morale deck. So there we go. So that's going to go into there. And that means if I get a high morale card, there's a chance that it could be this despair card that's gone into there, which is negative effects in a deck, which is predominantly for positive effects. Okay. So we're going to move that back to there. Uh, and then we're going to check our surrender. Okay. So do I have my, does my surrender increase? Do three or more defenders in the morgue? No. Four or more defenders in the waiting area? No. Six artillery on the map? No. Siege, not in the siege stage. Okay. So that's, Fine, I'm okay there. I've still got enough defenders there uh, to do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got seven defenders. That's okay. So that works fine for me. We next move on to here. Check the turn track for where you are down here. We know there's two more German patrols to add to the map. So let's have a look which numbers we draw. I've got number two and number six. So that's okay for where I am. I've still got a direct route from here to get back at the moment. So that works out for me. Uh, and then you move the turn marker. And that is how you play the mobilization phase. And that's, you know, and it will go up. And you can see already that the board is starting to get filled up. That things are starting to happen. And now you repeat that over another, over the course of uh, the first three days. Then you do the coop and then you'd switch over to the other side. So I'm not going to go into this in too much depth because things start opening up now, basically. But here we have your soldiers here, okay? So at some point, the German infantry is going to be put on here. So you've got three on there. And you're going to roll against them. And each one, you'll roll a die for them. So let's see. That's a four for that guy. That's a three for that guy. And that's a two. But let's say that was a six, a five or a six instead. So if you look above the board here, it tells you where they go. So we know we got two, a three and a, two which are threes and uh, a three and a four, and one which is a five. So for the five, you're going to move it up to it's a hit, sorry. So that you would lay them effectively down. They've been hit. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah. You it's a hit. Um, yeah. You would lay them down. Then up here, you would move them. If it's a three or a four, you would move them up into the next level so they would effectively move up here and what happens is 
that would happen each round. You start loading more German soldiers on the bottom. You're going to uh, move them up and then you get the charge. Then they're going to try and hit you. That's where your defence comes in. And it becomes this real kind of tug of war. As you're managing all of this on here, you're also trying to battle these soldiers here. And that's how it plays out up until it goes to day six then. So from day kind of four to day six, that's how it's going to play out. Similar thing happening on here, but of course you're opening up more and more and you're trying to get more defenders and you're pulling out from the hit bag. And when you pull out the hit bag, what happens is that, you know, you've got all these things in here. So say it tells you you have to pull two tokens out of the hit bag. There we go. Oh, I've got a miss, which is fine. That would go back in the reserve. But that would effectively go onto there. So that would have done that there. So that would happen if you have to go into the hit bag. Then you get to retreat and retreat. You're going to place an artillery on each space marked with an artillery symbol on the yellow row of the map. So you can see them here, one, two, three spaces. Move the supply marker one step to the right. So you move that up there and you would lower that down. Your defense down one. Remove the first attack board from the main board. Move any soldiers that are on there onto the main board. So that's where you would get rid of that at the end of day six. Move on to the day board. And this is where the soldiers really start taking. You get you, grenades, hits and misses and they're moving up. And you've got this is where this starts to become really, really important as you've got like various soldiers on various sectors moving up throughout the game. And you've got like, I think there are 21 of these soldiers here. And as soon as they get into that charge, what will happen is they're going to try and get you. So injure the leftmost defender and place the um, the soldier back in the reserve. That's what's going to happen in, in, when they charge. Or move one defender from the tired area um, to the morgue and place one soldier into the reserve. So <laughs> it starts to get worse and worse for you as you're battling these. These guys, you're going to start putting these air tokens into the hit bag. So when you need to go to the hit bag, not only are you pulling out artillery strikes, not only are you pulling out damage, you might pull out the odd miss token, but you're going to pull an art you possibly build an airstrike out there. You know, injure one defender or minus one morale. All of them have negative effects. And all the while, you're battling through these various cards as you go through. So here we go. Here's a card for the first attack. You can see the weather. Injure two defenders. Move the artillery marker one step to the right. When this ever hits one of those artillery, you put them on the map. If there's more than six artillery on the map, then that's it. That's game over. As we go to Siege 1, here we go. Move one so, uh, infantry from the reserve to level one in the infirmary. So you're going to move something from here. You're going to take up a spot in your infirmary. You've got to do the right thing. There's a Hippocratic Oath in place. You've got to try and heal them. You can't kill them. You've got to try and heal them so you can free up your hospital to get them through. As we go through to Siege 2, this is where things start to get really bad. You're going to draw two tiles from the hit bag. Then you're going to, you're going to do the airplane actions, the artillery actions, and add four, defenders, four infantry to here. Then you get through all that. You're up at day 11. You've your board is full of stuff. You're, these are being killed or they're in the hospital or you're, everything's going really bad for you. Then you draw a last stand card. This is if you made it to day 11, this is where it starts to, not starts to get, this is where it will tip things over for you. You really need to make sure you've got enough left because if you've managed to make it through to day 11, these are the kickers. What's on the last stand card? I'm not going to show you. I am not going to show you because I don't want to spoil just how... <sighs> hard it is and that's it now as i say i didn't want to go too in depth about the, the gameplay give you an overview there on the gameplay you can see the kind of many facets of gameplay you can see how it starts to build up how every area of the board gets used and how managing those threats is very 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 important Whew. that's halls of hegra Now, as I said, I could have really gone into the minutiae on how each different stage works, but I think I've given you potentially a good, over enough, a good enough overview on how things work. There are lots of nuances in this game, lots of decisions to make, lots of impending threat, uh, and things can turn south pretty quickly for you. But also, sometimes you kind of think, "Oh God, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm doing really well on this, and I'm, I'm, it's gonna, I'm gonna win. I've, I've, I've made really good, smart choices all the way through. I am going to win." And then something happens, something on an event card, 
maybe a bad die roll against the infantry or whatever, or as you're shooting against the artillery and the, uh, the German infantry on the board, which you can do, and we've not really gone into how that works there, then things can go bad, or you draw a, a low morale card that sends you wildly off course, or you know you put a despair card in your um, in your high morale deck. Things happen, and I think it's that constant sense of not knowing what's going to happen, but the chances are is it's going to be very bad is the beating heart of this game uh, and it's made more relevant by the fact it's based on an actual historical event and i think you know that really takes me to a place where um you know it's it feels really you feel emotionally connected to it not quite like this war of mine where you are connected emotionally connected to individual characters fortunately my volunteers don't have names and faces um <laughs> If they did, it would be a lot more of a harrowing experience. Um, and I think, as you can see, and as you can tell from how I've spoken about this game, I don't say that this is the best pure solo experience that I've played in recent, you know, in, in, in quite a while. I don't say that lightly. Um, you know, the aim of these videos is to, yes, you know, they're a, a Kickstarter preview video. So they're to give a positive spin on the game. And of course, uh, they're not a review where it's an expurgated, you know, pluses or minuses. But I'm saying this hand on heart, and I've said it in my um, my recent roundup video as well. It really is one of the best pure solo games I've played. Now, people will liken some of it to Robinson Crusoe, and I can understand that. It's not totally like Robinson Crusoe. I did not like, I appreciated, but didn't like Robinson Crusoe. Um, this does a lot more, a lot smarter for me, and it feels more connected. It feels more relevant. I feel more invested feel like I have more agency in this game and I feel like those actions that I'm taking in the early part of the game really 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 connect to my success or lack thereof as you get to the mid and the end part of the game as well what you do early game absolutely counts there aren't any wasted turns in uh, turns in this game it's utterly amazing um you know it's it's just a genuinely fantastic experience i say i'm not playing in david thompson games and uh, i know it's been likened to some of those a little bit of dawn of the zeds, dawn of the zeds uh, about it got some tower defense about it i know it's been likened to some of the david thompson games but for me coming into these types of games this is my first experience in this kind of war game and I'm utterly blown away. I'm totally smitten with this game. I think it is a masterstroke of design. Um, it's a pure solo treat. I think this game deserves to be looked at. I'm not saying everybody will appreciate or like this type of game, but I think most people should be looking at this. I believe it's on TTS or Board Game Arena. You can go out and try it on that. Um, and your first game is going to be getting used to, or your first couple of games is going to be getting used to the mechanisms. The more you play it, the more you get into the strategy of the game. The randomization of these decks is really, really important as well. That the Not knowing what event is coming across. If you play it a few times, you may know some of the events and you may know that they're going to come out so you can start planning for them, but there's not guaranteed that they are going to come out. It provides such a wonderful, wonderful solo experience. It's going to take you around about 90 minutes to play a game if you manage to get to the end. Um, but it's a first-rate solo war game, and I think, for me, uh, it's one that I'm definitely going to be backing. Uh, Pet has already given me the name of the next preview that's taking this game, uh, which is a shame. Um, but uh, I can't wait to get my hands on the finished version. I think what I'd like to see in the finished version very, very little than what's here already. I'd just like to see, and I know obviously this is a prototype, yeah? I'd love to see even more of these cards, these event cards, and really kind of stacking the deck on those so you really have no idea what's coming out. Maybe also you could model that into particular scenarios as well so you could choose certain certain cards from each deck and that would give you a particular scenario. You want the Germans to go heavy or you want the Germans to go light in this particular area. You want to explore, uh, I don't know, digging out more or what have you, then those cards can actually do that. So I'd like to see more of variety in those cards. Uh, and I'm sure that will happen as the game gains traction uh, during its crowdfunding campaign. I'm blown away by it. I think it's an absolutely fantastic game. My favourite pure solo experience that I've played in a long, long time. Make sure you check out Halls of Hegra 
by Petr uh, Shanker Olsen uh, and Tompet Games on Kickstarter. The link will be in the description below. Make sure this game gets funded. It's a game that deserves funding. I love Halls of Hegram. Thank you very much for joining me on this video. My name is Mark. This is Not Board Gaming. Don't forget to like and, uh, like and <laughs> subscribe to the channel. Check out our other videos. And one final thought. If you can't find anyone else to play with, there's nothing wrong with playing with yourselves. Until next time, bye-bye. Oh,